Today we're going to be following an Archon 4 Dazzle support, and it's a real tragedy how this game goes, because I think this player actually does a ton of things right. His grave usage is quite good, I like the way he farms, his item build is, you know, it's okay. Maybe there's some adjustments I would definitely make early on, but overall this player makes a lot of good decisions. However, there's one main thing that is lacking, strongly lacking that basically loses him the game. So yeah, we're gonna be analyzing this Archon 4 Dezel gameplay, let's get into it! And uh, yeah, if you are excited for this and you want more supporting content, definitely like and subscribe to help our channel grow, and basically to let me know that you wanna see that supporting content. Now quickly, before I get into the video, I know this is the usual, but I just want to say if you guys are a support player, and obviously I assume a lot of you who are watching this video are support players, I just finished an entire line course on the Game Leap website. It's not your typical course where it's gonna be like, oh, here's the item build. Here's the skill build, here's the talent build, like, you know, I'll cover these things throughout the gameplay, of course, but for the most part, I'm talking about advanced movements, my thought process, basically how you can get inside of the head of a 7k MMR player, and basically transition all of those thoughts into your own gameplay. So right now, click the link down below in the description, and you're going to be able to check out the entire course when it's released. It's super cool stuff, I'm very excited for it. And uh, yeah, let's now get into the video. All right, so getting into the rune trade, we're gonna right away see an issue. So this is kind of a Dazzle based issue and Dazzle is my favorite support. So actually, well, one of my favorite supports. So I know a lot about this hero. And a lot of the time, what low MMR players make the mistake of with Poison Touch is they treat it sort of like level one Jingu mastery. If you guys are familiar with, you know, Monkey King's Jingu, you understand how a lot of the time at level one, people kill themselves, especially if the opponent's man up, they kill themselves just to get it off. Same thing with Bristlebacks. And what we're going to see here is he gets poison to touch on both of them. He's like, ah, I got a man up, right? Absolutely not. Once they go into this high ground, if they are good, if you walk up right here, bam, they're going to both hit you. So I love the fact that you're poison touching and you're getting aggressive. But in my opinion, it's a little bit early and I would have waited till there's about three to four seconds on the clock left so that they have to commit in. Hopefully that makes sense, right? You want to wait for them to have to commit because they actually make the high, like, I am shocked. I don't, what am I bar these people? Ancient 3, Archon 5, okay, pretty high. Because a lot of players, they'll just run away, but they make the correct decision. And I think it's mainly because the bounty rune is not there. Like, they still want to fight the bounty rune, so they man up. So basically what I want you to do is wait. Just wait a little bit um, because this costs you a lot of HP and then you keep over committing like guys You're not allowed to solo walk up that hill if you're gonna walk up that hill You have to do it with both of your characters uh, then it's acceptable and moving on guys. Uh, please stop oh, dude. What is this item man? Do you, does anyone read what it does? Have you read what it does? Because there's no way you read the description of this item for range heroes and you legitimately think that it's still good It does two magical damage for two seconds. That's Four damage, if I'm doing the math correct. You know, that's years of college. Four damage, are you kidding? Four damage and a 4% slow for 300 gold? Like, you can't be serious. You know what items are 10 times better? Hmm, maybe iron branches, maybe clarities, maybe fairy fires, mangoes, all these items that give you 10 times more than an orb of venom on ranged heroes. Like, this is just such a grief to your ability to trade. It, it's terrible. Getting into this landing stage, this is where things really go south. And I know it's like, oh, then the game just start? Well, I mean, yeah, uh, however, his mid game, in my opinion, was pretty good. Like, I don't like everything, of course, but for the most part, I was shocked that a lot of the things I was seeing were pretty good. However, this landing stage just mediocre. Now, the early trading was OK. Uh, I would have preferred that he used his Q a little bit earlier into the trade. But overall, you know, that was pretty good. So, so far, not so bad. In fact, I don't think a lot of supports actually do that you know, do that bad on the first wave. They understand, okay, in the first wave, you know, you're denying and harassing. It's pretty straightforward. Stay behind your core, you know, blah, blah, blah. The, the, the huge. But then at this point, this is where things, in my opinion, go south. Right off the back here, a minute in, he had the opportunity to side pull. He could have side pulled. And this is going to be my main thesis of the landing stage. Now, I know this isn't exactly position five gameplay. I, I'll probably eventually do one of these on position five. Actually, a position by Quap, wow. But every single position 4 I ever watched, melee heroes, range heroes, basically never side pulls. I don't know why, I don't know why it's so unpopular, I really do not understand, but this side pull is one of the most important things in laning properly as an offlane duo, especially if you are an aggressive offlane, because it allows you to double the damage of poison touch. Think about it, if you, if you poison touch someone here, and hit them all the way back to their tower, you are going to get in significantly more auto attacks than poison touching them right here. It's not even close. So all you have to do is side pull the wave, drag them together, meet the creep wave at the large camp, 
and all of a sudden, you can actually win your lane. Yes, you can win your lane if you buy good items, like if he has a bunch of mangoes here and a fairy fire, he can just trade with them all day every day, and they can actually win the lane. But instead, for an entire 8 minutes, we're just gonna see the lane static under this tower, which is so unbelievably bad. It doesn't let you pressure the PL, and yes, I know, this is not the best lane for pressuring PL. It's two physical damage heroes and poison touch, which can be dispelled. However, if you play it well enough, and you get him, especially considering he bought like no regen, if you can get him to overextend, you can win the lane. But they never do this, and most players don't understand this concept of basically pulling the lane back so you can actually win it. And right here, this exact creep, like this singular creep, shows to me how backwards this Dazzle's thinking is. Finally, the lane is starting to pull back, right? They got one creep to hold the lane back, and this is good. If you have one creep of the lane back, that's fantastic, because it's gonna static the wave right here. And Dazzle just starts auto- he just auto attacks it, and last it hits it, like, now the lane's gonna meet here! Do you understand- guys, do you understand how big of a difference it is between the lane meeting here and here? It's a world's difference. It's like three to four auto attacks if the PL goes for a CS. Like, I just can't stress it enough, and I know it's me harping on the quote-unquote same thing, but what else am I supposed to talk about for the laning stage? Like, I could really be like, ah, oh, he's not casting his spells, which he's sort of not, but the reason why he can't cast his spells is because the lane's so far up. You can't do anything. I hope this is- if you guys are actually listening to me right now, and I know this is a bit harpy, but it's because I know otherwise a lot of people are not gonna start side pulling if I don't just- make this point seem like it's the end of the world, because it really is the end of the lane. And upcoming here, this whole sequence makes me a bit sad. It's not the end of the world. You know, this TB was pretty good, but they finally get the wave back, right? They have, in a, they have it in a position where, the, you know, the Dazzle and the, the Wind Ranger can basically stand right here. They can just stand in front of Kahoo and just punch him. But now the Dazzle leaves, which is okay. He wanted to get bounties, was a bit late on bounties, quite a big mistake. It happens, I understand. Obviously, you have to try to fix those type of things. And then he looks mid, you know, this is respectable. He didn't just blind TP mid. He saw, okay, this is a big dive. My SF is low, I'm gonna TP in and save him. So to be fair, that heal 100% saved the SF and secured him a kill. So that was a great TP. The reason is, is because he actually checked that it was a dive and was looking before TPing. Most fives just like blind TP and it's garbage. Make sure when you see the mid dive happening or, or or your mid laner says I'm getting dove, look, then TP. I know it can be hard and sometimes there are niche situations in Dota where you should blind TP because Dota is such a hard game, but for the most part, look, make sure it's a dive that you can actually do something in and that they're not already dead and then TP. Otherwise, you're kind of just putting yourself in a situation where you're leaving your lane, which means you're not going to be able to crush your lane. And guys, I'm going to give you a heads up now. This peel ends up carrying the game. He becomes the top net worth and snowballs. And I wanted to ask you a question. Can their team deal with PL? I would argue yes. Throughout the majority of the early game, they can. Focus Fire is a great counter to PL as Doppelganger does not... You can't get rid of Focus Fire. You can't dispel it. So that's a great counter. They have Quapulti, Raises, Spin. They can deal with PL for a while, but probably not when he gets three items. Then things will get out of hand and eventually the game does get to that point. And following on, I'm not going to say the same thing, I'm going to move on to his mid game, but at the end of the day, he just never side pulls. It doesn't happen even once. And you can do it five, six, seven times in a lane. I know that might sound like a lot, and usually that is more than you can do it. I'm just trying to really exemplify that point. One thing that always gets on my nerves is when supports don't care about every single little piece of XP they can possibly get. When I'm playing position 4 and position 5, I am going to make sure I sap every creep that I possibly can that doesn't grief my teammates, right? Doesn't grief my teammates. So here, the Dazzle gets some mid farm. SF died, okay. You know, TP's mid, the Lundra's denying him. Now, this heal is so bad. It's so bad. Like, do you guys understand that this level 6 is a major power spike to Dazzle? It makes him so much stronger. And now, not only does he nuke the wave into deny range instead of last hitting it, right? You could just put it into last hit range, then heal it. He nukes it and then walks away. Now, he fortunately was in XP range because XP range is so big. But my gosh, why? You realize you could be this level right now. He could be like five and what is that? Two thirds? It's just such a big difference. And now following this, honestly, guys, there's really not much he can do to win this game. I'm not going to lie. Like, the basis of this Dazzle gameplay now is basically kind of what he's going to do. TP into fights, cast Grave, he secured a kill onto the bear, and kept that SF alive for a pretty long period of time. But other than that, this is where Dazzle falls off. This is where Dazzle becomes weak. 
Not only that, he could have taken mid farm, some mid XP, and he decides to walk back to base, which I don't like. But really, because you don't win the laning stage or do even decent, in my opinion, actually you did okay. But because you, you don't crush the lane, it's very hard for Dazzle to know what to do now because you're underleveled, you can't actually pressure people. Basically, what you have to rely on is people like M on Lone Druid overextending to the ends of the earth to try to kill some SF. You know, this is good spellcasting. I'm fine with that grave. You know, it maybe could have been a little bit later, but still, you're casting all your spells. You cast your E, you cast your W, you cast your Poison Touch. That's awesome. You're actually quite good at spellcasting, and now you're farming as well, which I'm pretty cool with, you know? Like, you get this Royal Jelly, you pop that. If you're- you pop that. You know, if you're supporting to get Royal Jelly, you deserve it, alright? You deserve it, man. Eat that stuff. And he does, so respect to him. But in all seriousness, Dazzle's hard to make plays with. It really, really is. So, if your team isn't gonna group up, well, and you generally don't want them to group up this early, unless you really have some very high MMR coordination or, or objective to get, then yeah, you kind of just want to be farming and pushing in waves and hitting your next item timing, which you kind of do. Like, you kill this camp here, you poison touch it, like, I'm fine with this, you know? I'm even cool with you buying mana boots or, or sages masks into, like, a necromonicon just to continue to amplify your farm. I know it might sound crazy, but in this MMR bracket, that's what, if I wanted to reliably have a lot of impact, I think that's what I would do. It's what I would do at this point, because... It's just going to make sure you scale when everything is being so passive, which is generally how these games go. There's just like a 10 minute lull at random times where no one does anything. The next thing I want to mention, even though it is very difficult to do, but I still will try to do this. If you guys ask a lot of the people in the Game Leap Discord um, that I've been in-housing with, you're going to hear from a lot of them, at least I believe, unless I'm, I'm out of my mind. You're going to hear from a lot of them that very often I'll call people to get back. I'll tell them to back, 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 like stop going, stop diving, right? Especially when it comes to high ground. Not always in the early game, right? Especially if I'm a core, I'm not going to like see it, but I will very often tell people to back and stop chasing because chasing is what gets people killed. This SF should understand that this is no longer a kill. It's too far. He's not getting it. He's diving under a tower. That doesn't work. They have Glimpse, they have Icarus Dive, they have Spear Mars. You can't make a play like this. It is not a good play. And you have to see this and be like, hmm, this looks terrible. And then tell him to back. Like he just long raised. How does he ever think he's going to get this kill? But that's what people do. So you have to try to facilitate people to stop diving. It's one of the best things you can do as a support. Don't dive high ground. Don't dive tier ones. Don't dive tier twos unless it's a synergized dive. That's the only time dives are like good when you have five people collapsing quick, fast, it has to be fast. And usually it doesn't happen in pubs. So for the most part, it's bad. This grave was definitely a bit early. Uh, I think you would have died anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, your main responsibility there is to try to identify that your SF is diving and call him the back because you can't even help him if he's overextending. It's going to get you killed as well. It's why whenever I'm coaching core players, I'm like the main fights you want to show up to when you're farming if you're playing like Wraith King, Alk, or Pio, is the dives, because then you easily can catch the supports who are under the tier 1 tower. And this fight is a great example of why I just wish he spent a lot more time looking into the landing stage and, and watching pros and what they do, because I love how he casts his spells here. Leads with the heal, reduces all the armor, then instead of going for Poison Touch first, which would have burned his mana, he goes for the grave. And this is a fantastic grave, because it secures the kill onto the Mars here, right? She was focused firing the Mars. It's such a great grave. Not only that, the Wind Ranger, because the Phoenix is absolute garbage, ends up living. Right? She ends up living. Psych! I pranked you guys. You probably thought she was going to end up living and Dazzle was a god, but no, he didn't heal that time. <laughs> nah, but in all seriousness, I mean, great grave, great, like, spell usage there. His mana is a bit low because I don't think he's sustaining it perfectly. I probably would have buy raindrops myself, as I said, the Sage's Mask, or put more emphasis on getting mana boots instead of this garbage Orb of Venom item. Also, if you lane better and have more last hits, you could have that as well. So yeah, if I was him, I would put a lot more emphasis on finding the hard waves, buying more mana items, and just getting to cast all my spells, but his team fighting so far has been good. Like, this spellcasting, I would argue, is like 5 to 6k MMR spellcasting. You know, sure he's out of mana, which is a big issue, but this is pretty good. I even like the fact that he's jungling. He's just constantly out of mana at this point, and griefed his early game. All in all, at this point as well, if I'm looking at your team, you kind of have to make plays around the Wind Ranger because no one else can make plays, but your Wind Ranger is actually having a great game. She's level 12, which is pretty good. She has quite a bit of farm, right? If we look at the network chart, she's not too down, right? And she's a Wind Ranger, so you're always going to have kill potential when Wind Ranger has her focus fire plus a damage item. That's just kind of a fact in Dota. She can kill people. So what I would do is I would synergize with the hero that has the most kill potential. Does Jug have a lot of kill potential? I mean, he does if it's at a certain point in the match with Dazzle, right? Early game, sure. But at this point, it's not really that good. Sure, Omni Slash is okay, but he's going Battle Fury, and he's not going to deal that much damage. 
So I would highly prefer right now you're making smoke plays or protecting your Wind Ranger to go kill PL. I mean, right now, this PL straight up dies to Wind Ranger. He does. If you figure out which one is real and you focus fire him, he will die. It, it is that straightforward in my opinion. So I really wish he, you would facilitate, you know, kills and pressure around this PL because right now he's farming very obviously. Like this PL is unbelievably easy to gank as long as you smoke to him. I know it's okay. It's a bit hard because you don't have a proper stun, which makes this position for Dazzle pick a bit questionable in the first place. But he's killable simply because of the way he's playing. In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if he shows top in a second. And now, unfortunately, I couldn't even end my point before he showed top. That's how predictable people are. But yeah, just run at the nearby hero. Like, please. You know, jungling is cool and all, but I'm only cool with jungling if, they're, like, the gank has been ended. Or you just ended a gank, or you ended a fight, or there's seemingly nothing to do. Like, very clearly nothing to do. Uh, like, no one's showing, there's no one on the map. And now, you, like, kind of want to make a play, but, like, you just run into the creep wave. This is terrible. This is terrible. Like, I'm cool with you warding this and all. I probably would have preferred that you went up this hill and warded here to scout him out when he's farming these two camps so you could come focus fire gank him. But I, I just think this is a complete misunderstanding of what your job is this game. You have to try to synergize your teammates and, and make the plays. Basically, you can micro your teammates. And I know that's super difficult to do. It's like, how do I focus on my own gameplay and my teammates' gameplay? Well, basically, if you can't do anything as your own hero, you need to try to get other people active. If I'm playing Dazzle and I can't do anything alone, well then, of course... Oh my gosh, she just focused fire to tower. But of course, if I can't do anything alone, I'm gonna get my teammates to help me out. You have to. That's the only play you can make in that case. Yeah, this really does hurt my soul because this player just recently grave TP'd out, right? Making a great play to save himself with a grave TP, understanding what heroes have cancels and which don't. So he makes a great grave TP out and then here, he follows it up perfectly, leads with the heal, which is exactly what you'd want to do. I know a lot of people would leave with poison touch out of habit, but he doesn't. He leads with the, you know, the heal, then follows it up with a perfectly timed grave then does not completely back and gets a really good poison touch off like this is so good it's so good but he's just not doing anything else in between like his spell casting is good but he has no understanding of how to create pressure on the map and how to win the laning stage and that's what makes him an archon player like if i'm in this game the peel is gonna have three more deaths maybe five if the laning stage is really bad and the whole game looks different and that's not an ego that's me trying to really make you guys understand that you can always have more impact even as a support. It's just often a lot more unclear of what you have to do. It's it's actually quite a bit harder in a lot of regards because cords, it's like, hmm, if you don't know what to do, you could just go farm. Worst case scenario. Not saying that's the best play necessarily, but at least you could just go try to hit more creeps if you don't know what you're doing wrong. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, I just want to mention this item build. I'm going to end it here. Uh, there's nothing particularly terrible about it. You bought a wand, mana boots are okay on Dazzle, in my opinion. You know, if, you, if you're, you know, farming and fighting, it can be really good. Especially considering you get the cooldown reduction on them. I'm cool with that. But this vessel is just terrible. Like, as is, you couldn't even get vessel charges. And you don't need to anti-heal people. Like, sure, you could say the anti-heal is good against Vlad's Mars. It is. It's also pretty good against the heal of the Lone Druid. Fair. However, if I'm you, I'm going to be very concerned about getting focused, right? I'm going to be very concerned about getting jumped by the Mars. Now, he didn't go Blink Dagger, so, you know, it's a pretty hard thing to guess that he's not going to go Blink Dagger. You can buy it at any time, um, but he doesn't go Blink, and then the PL is probably going to focus you to a large extent. At least if I'm PL, I would definitely look to kill the Dazzle, and therefore, I would probably buy smaller items. I would put a large emphasis on Glimmer most games, and, um... Yeah, that's where I'm going to end the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and you see a lot of the mistakes that this Dazzle makes and you can try to now fix them within your own gameplay. I've been really enjoying this series of like fixing 2k and 3k MMR mistakes because I think for the most part it really is the majority of the players at least watching this channel and I think it's going to help you guys out a ton if you actually listen and don't just say, you know, I'm not like that. I'm not these players. Like, no, you are like these players. That's why you're the same MMR. Like, I know that's a hard thing to hear sometimes, but I'm only saying it because I was in your position as well. You know, I calibrated 2.3k MMR when Dota started, and I worked my way up by having the humility to say, yeah, what I'm doing is wrong. What I'm doing is terrible. Everything I've learned is not necessarily an original thought, right? A lot of it is not. A lot of it I've learned from pros, such as Blitz. But yeah, Blitz and Purge and every other resource that I could possibly get my hands on, I learned from. And that's gonna be the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe and check out the Game Leap website in the description down below. Peace. And hey guys, remember, before you end this video, in the link down below, I've been playing a lot of live games where I talk about my thoughts in real time in the middle of a Dota match. So if you wanna get in the head of a pro player, click the link down below to the Game Leap website. Super cheap right now, right? Like, and I'm doing this a ton.
We all have time on our hands. I have time to make content. You guys probably have time to enjoy and learn Dota, get better at the game. So yeah, if, if that combo works for you, click the link down below and I'll see you there.